Good evening, everyone, and welcome to NIFA at 50, a celebratory look forward. I'm your host, Grace Angela Henry, and this evening I'm coming to you live from the NIFA offices in Dumbo, Brooklyn. Like so many other workspaces, these halls have been quiet the last year, and they look different than what we're all used to seeing. Tonight's event will also look different compared to galas we've held in the past. For the first time, we're coming into your homes with this virtual format, which lets us be joined by hundreds of friends and artists from over 20 states across the U.S. and from around the world who wouldn't have been able to attend an in-person event in New York City. And that's such a blessing because it allows us to mark our 50th anniversary with the entire NIFA community. Painters, playwrights, musicians, everyone whose creative spirit has kept us going for half a century and inspires us to continue our mission to serve artists. We're so glad to have you with us tonight, and I'm excited to share the program we've put together. We'll be taking a look back at the early years of NIFA and exploring a few current projects from our fellows and fiscally sponsored artists. I'll be back later in the program, but for now, please join me in welcoming NIFA's chair of the board of directors, Mark Jason. NIFA sends our deepest gratitude to the benefactors of tonight's event for their dedication and generous support. Good evening, everyone, and once again, welcome to NIFA at 50, a celebratory look forward. I'm Mark Jason, board chair at the New York Foundation for the Arts. We're so glad to have you joining us as we celebrate 50 years of this incredible organization. NIFA was established back in 1971 as an independent nonprofit dedicated to providing services to individual artists throughout New York State. Since then, we've expanded our reach beyond New York and broadened our scope to serve the entire creative community. The years have seen NIFA constantly evolving to better serve the needs of artists and arts organizations through grant opportunities, our fiscal sponsorship program, professional development initiatives, and extensive online resources. This past year has been especially tough, with the pandemic largely shutting down the arts and entertainment. NIFA has risen to the challenges faced by the arts this year by providing more than $4 million in emergency awards and grants to individual artists and arts professionals. It's also been a time of tremendous racial and social discord, and artists are needed more than ever. They help us make sense of the world, foster empathy, bring us joy and hope, and lead us in new directions. So let's take this moment we have together to reflect on all we've accomplished over the last half century and look ahead to all that is still to come. We're excited to celebrate NIFA's dynamic history, let you hear from some of the artists we've served, and much more. On behalf of NIFA, I want to thank you all for showing your support by joining us this evening. Thank you and enjoy. The first grant was in 1985, and uh, getting the financial support actually meant a lot to me at that time, and uh, it, was, it was a big help. It came at a time where I was very low on income and very low on recognition. It was great. The year that I got a NIFA grant that changed my life completely, I had three part-time jobs. I was a dog dryer in a pet shop. I was an extra standing in in porno films, and then I taught Sunday school on Sundays. And I lived up here in this same old country house and commuted to New York City. I was pretty desperate for funding as usual in those years, and that grant really changed my life. You need something to make you feel good. You know, because being an artist is a wonderful thing, but it can have its downside. So that's an upside. 
yeah, getting an award, being one of those that are chosen. That's fabulous. I love it. And then the NIFA grant came and it allowed me to start my company. To me, it was the validation of being a risk taker and, and also using that time as a laboratory to find out who I was as a choreographer and what my voice was, what my vision was. I first got my grant uh, from NIFA. The first one was in 1992. The wonderful thing was to have enough money to buy all the supplies I needed, and I did. It's exactly how where it went. I got the NIFA, and it was one of those things that allowed me to work a little bit less. And for me, that was so formative. I got a grant from NIFA, which literally was my very first award. It came before any commission, before any theater really took notice of me, and it was just that kind of wind beneath my sails. I feel like I should sing at this moment. I received NIFA support at the earliest stage of my career and uh, I would say aside from the financial help that it gave me at the time as a book artist, um, it really gave me that necessary moral and psychological support uh, to believe in myself, to allow myself to go on to discover what I'm about to do and to further develop it. The NIFA grant was such an extraordinary eye-opening and humbling moment. That recognition was translated into very practical things for me. My son was very young at the time, and I wasn't making any money as a writer. I got childcare. I was able to think more deeply about my work and also to write things in quiet. I needed to have this kind of support that somehow what I did mattered, and that it was so important to have NIFA recognize that my little question was worth supporting. All the resource that uh, NIFA has in terms of the, the website, for us artists, it's a place where we go to look for opportunities, just space and, um, and kind of fellowship, so it's, a, it's like wonderful. When I got the NIFA award in 2005, I was not showing with the gallery. I was extremely excited for multiple reasons. Number one, I got a check, which was a good thing. Um, but beyond that was I felt that I was being acknowledged as the artist that I was becoming. And I was in this interdisciplinary field, which made it really nice. It was a validation that I didn't have to put myself into sculpture or painting but I could sort of traverse between many different forms, including performance and video. And I think that acknowledgement at that point was extremely important to me, and it was an affirmation. My name is Rika Takashima. I'm an artist. Uh, he's my mentor, Carlos. I don't know much about art industry in New York City. He gave me a lot of advice to my next step. Uh, thank you, Carlos. <laughs> NIFA makes me feel like it's my home, like we're alumni, but we can come here and, and we're welcome, which is huge, you know, when you come to this big city from another country, speaking another language, and then you have this organization that says, here, you know, here's your home, you can come, here's a mentor, she would talk to you about things. And it, it, it makes you feel so secure that, okay, she's been through this, and now uh, she's guiding me, guidance. And NIFA helped me in finding 
the right mentor, the right resources, and the, the right opportunities. And some really interesting programs. Um, for instance, something called Boot Camp, which trains um, people in the creative fields to be entrepreneurs, to think of themselves as entrepreneurs. What NIFA does in the boot camp that's really great is it empowers you to kind of take ownership of that part of yourself, even if for many years you've thought of yourself as, no, I'm just a really creative person, I can't be organized, I can't get that together. They actually say, yes, you can, this is how you're going to do it. NIFA's program helped me as an artist because it made me think about myself as an entrepreneur and that's a completely different mindset than being in the studio. Really what NIFA has done is um, given me a kind of freedom that I hope is manifests in, in a very good project. It allows young artists to change the trajectory of their careers. It allows them a cut at having enduring careers. I love being an artist because it speaks to who I am. I can tell my story in a unique way. And the work love lives forever. For me, my art has been a way of life and uh, a way to fulfill in me uh, a way that I, I could feel engaged in something very meaningful. Uh, otherwise, generally, I find life uh, rather banal and almost intolerable. <laughs> I think the role of art in creating connections between people has never been more important. Artists fill gaps. Artists create the connections and create empathy that isn't even necessarily seen in the world, but it affects the world. And I think that when the average person in this country thinks that art matters, that's a huge step because it is so often seen as less important than food and housing and jobs and healthcare. And all those things are really important to me too. But I chose this path because I think that literature can create the level of empathy that many things cannot. I, I believe that. I believe that with everything that I do. NIFA is one of those organizations that's helped really so many people. They give the type of support and enthusiasm and confirmation that artists and creators are on their path. They're doing what they should be doing. I can't imagine the terrain without it. Many thanks to our anniversary sponsors for their contributions in honor of 50 years of NIFA. Happy anniversary, NIFA. I'm Jennifer Karate. I'm a visual artist with the NIFA Fiscal Sponsorship Program. I've been with the program since 2007 for my project Soldier Stories from Iraq and Afghanistan. For many years, I've been working with veterans returning from these wars to make these pretty elaborate stage narrative photographs that both depict a moment from war, but also reveal their difficulties in adjusting to civilian life. So the project is really about the psychology of life after war and how the past can infiltrate the present after trauma. Through NIFA, I've been able to earn significant and necessary support for this work. As an independent artist, I require funding to make my work. Every time I go in to meet with a fiscal sponsorship team, I feel like I have this brain trust devoted to helping me figure out how to present the most competitive and successful grant application I can. And they cheer me on. They've also helped me move my practice into documentary film and into immersive sound and video installation. So tonight you'll see a clip from a short documentary film I made about my artistic process on soldier stories. 
I made the film because I see my process as part of the work itself. The film encapsulates several months of working with Army veteran Lucero Morales and her family, from initial interviews to conceptually building the photo and then to the photo shoot itself. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Is this too crazy? Yes, that is too crazy. That counts as too crazy. Here, show Anton this this um, top. That's way too crazy. Well, I'm interested in creating a photograph that they really feel conveys their story visually. This is very different from the traditional photographer-subject relationship because it's so collaborative. She's kind of, the idea is like she's kind of running. Location scouting is a really important part of the process. Now, is this for the other part of the house too? This is for all of the whole house. So I was drawn to Lucy's story in particular because it took place in this very domestic space okay. that we think of as traditionally female. And I think I scouted seven kitchens before I found the right one. When Lucy described the firefight to me, she talked about the sounds of the bullets hitting her truck, this kind of pinging sound. So I needed to get a refrigerator and cabinet doors and put bullet holes in them to suggest a sense of this firefight. Um, we could put you in yellow. Let's see. The photo shoot is a very highly choreographed production and it takes place over a day at least. I have a crew that is helping me with the lighting and getting everything ready. Every little detail is very carefully considered. All right, here we go. Yeah. All right, loosen up your hands, Lucy. Yeah, one arm is forward, one arm is back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lucy, turn, yeah, turn back towards me. Good, that's really good. I shoot a lot of film. I shoot hundreds, hundreds of frames of film. You should hold that pose. Nikki, that's good, looking at your sister. Excellent. Her Lucy, try turning your body um, toward, like that way again, like more that way, yep. In a way, what, what I'm doing is I'm setting the scene and then kind of letting things happen but directing them at the same time. All right, look at your food, you guys. Yum! What? <gasps> okay, but, okay, Nikki, never look at the camera. Yeah, I'm trying to get you more, a little bit more in profile. We spend a lot of time working on their pose, and I shoot a lot of Polaroids. So you're running, and then you stop, but you turn back to look. Especially in Lucy's yeah. case, that really helped her figure out what she needed to do. She's basically performing herself. She's basically kind of performing her former self as a soldier in the photograph. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Woo. There was a point where Lucy really got into it and she really got her kind of action down and she really inhabited playing that yeah. role. Woo. That was good. I don't digitally alter the photographs in any way and I think that's really important for this project because I don't want to be able to go back and change something later. Because the process is collaborative, it's important that everything that was there in that moment is there in the photograph. I actually spend a lot of time editing. I look at very slight, nuanced details in terms of the pose and the expressions on Lucy's face or her kids' faces and, you know, looking for that perfect moment, that kind of decisive moment. I've made 21 photographs with veterans across the country so far. If anything, my commitment has deepened over time to the work, mostly because I feel so privileged to be the person who's bringing these stories out into the world. 
My hope is that these photographs will help civilians kind of understand soldiers better. And my hope is that, it, you know, the whole process of making the picture is helpful somehow for the person. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Michael Royce, Executive Director at the New York Foundation for the Arts. For the past 15 years, I've had the pleasure to serve this incredible organization as we move forward to tonight, our 50th anniversary celebration. Over the years, we've had many artists and individuals contribute their support toward our mission. Tonight, we honor not only an amazing philanthropist, but also an extraordinary artist and my friend, Mr. Basil Alpazi. Let's take a look, shall we? Basil Alcazi's long and distinguished career spans six decades. The distinguished art critic Donald Cuspit wrote, over the decades, Basil Alcazi had the courage to be an unfashionable painter and to work outside of the fleeting trends. Travel is often a metaphor for his life and work. And the much-respected art critic Dennis Wepman wrote, The artistic vision of Basil Alcazi has never ceased to grow, reflecting the restless aesthetic spirit that it expresses and the ceaseless exploration of form, technique, and subject that it impels. Each phase of the artist's work stands independently of itself, but each is necessarily the result of the long, unbroken journey of his life, and each expresses the spirit and mind of the artist, unchanged but ever-growing. Basil Alcazi is a cosmopolitan in his life as well as in his art. He has traveled extensively through the whole of Western Europe. For a time, he lived in Greece. At one point, he became enamored with the democratic ideals of the United States and lived in New York. More recently, he has traveled for extended periods of time through China, Japan, and South Korea. He now resides in Monaco, in the south of France. His generosity to other artists is far-reaching. He has established fellowships and grants to support young and emerging painters, including through NIFA, to give the recipient a means to withdraw and create a new body of work without outside pressure. He says, we live in a fast-moving culture that grows increasingly more abstract, away from the physical touch, away from the physical ground of being, away from the act of creation by hand. I want, in my own way, to encourage the glorious expression of pencil, brush, and paint, and to nurture the kind of artist and the kind of art that I like and respect. About his own work, he says, my paintings of nature are the life force embedded in nature, all of nature, and that includes human beings. To show our appreciation of the divine talent granted to artists, we purchase their art. It's a life-affirming luxury in being able to look at and contemplate a painting in one's own home. As a spiritualist, I have always believed that one must give back the blessings one has received. Life is a two-way street. It is not a cul-de-sac. Elizabeth Strepp, a choreographer, and I'm here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of New York Foundation for the Arts. Every young choreographer applies to NIFA, and when you get a NIFA grant, it changes the trajectory of your career. I just want to wish NIFA all the best for the next 50 years. 
Hey Nypha, happy 50th. I'm really glad you guys have been around supporting artists all that time. I've been one of them and uh, I'm really glad you're continuing on this mission. It's been a great 50 years. Keep up the good work and here's to another 50. Congratulations. I want to congratulate Nypha on 50 years of artistic goodness. Thank you for being there when I needed someone. Congratulations on 50 years. New York Foundation for the Arts fans, I, Carmelita Tropicana, celebrate NIFA for all you do, especially during the pandemic. Working hard to give money to artists, administering emergency arts grants, the website is a fountain of resources, and you contain new programs from fellowships to career development. Gracias, NIFA. Hi, I'm Luis Valderas, artist, educator, and board member for the New York Foundation for the Arts. I want to wish the New York Foundation for the Arts a happy birthday, 50 years of amazing, wonderful service in the arts. Congratulations to NIFA on your 50th anniversary. My own career was kickstarted by the 2012 Artists as Entrepreneur Bootcamp. As a board member, I am so proud to be part of an arts organization that's dedicated to empowering artists, practicing diversity, equity, and inclusion and making a real and lasting impact in the world. 50 years, wow. Congratulations, NIFA. Um, I wanna thank you for all that you do. I wanna thank you for all that you did for me and for all my friends, um, past, present, and even future. Um, please continue to do the work that you do. I'm here to support it in any way that I can. Um, and I'm excited for all the many artists that will uh, become part of the very rich legacy of NIFA in the future. Congratulations. I want to thank NIFA for its generosity, for supporting my career at such an early time, and happy 50th birthday. Saludos, my name is Ricardo Alberto Maldonado. I'm a poet from Puerto Rico, now living in New York for 15 years. I want to congratulate NIFA on 50 years of service to communities of artists and creators all over New York and the United States to the artists and the community at large, in the city, in the state, and in the US. In our art, I see a new, kinder world coming. I long to see that world with each of you. Take care. Thank you, Nifa, and wishing you 50 more fantastic years and beyond. At Nifa, our doors are open to everyone. In the past 14 years, we have helped more than 9,000 immigrant artists from 73 regions and countries overcome their particular barriers to success. And next year, we will launch the Immigrant Artist Resource Hub, a centralized database of information and resources for the immigrant artist community. After all, we are a nation of immigrants. And at NIFA, we feel it is a privilege to support the unique voices of all the artists who come to work or live in the United States. As part of our support and in recognition of the value that immigrant artists bring to all of us, we focus this year's benefit auction on their stories. Proceeds from the auction will go towards supporting the participating artist and our immigrant artist program. So I hope you'll take a moment to explore their amazing artwork up for bidding. To take a look, simply text the word web that's W-E-B, to the number on the bottom of your screen, and it will take you to our auction catalog. In the meantime, let's take a look at some of these wonderful pieces now. Thank you to the artists participating in this year's benefit auction for donating their amazing artwork. Thank you to everyone who's already donated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your support means so much. And a special shout out to some special people. Maureen Reeder, Erica Baum, Joseph Morris, Debbie Cornwall, these are some of our annual donors joining us this evening. 
Thank you for your years of support to NIFA. And I know so many of you joining us have a special connection to NIFA, whether as an artist who has received financial support from NIFA, or perhaps as a participant in one of NIFA's training programs, or as a friend of NIFA who recognizes the important role that this organization plays in helping artists. Thank you. Now is the time to show your support. You can text to give by picking up your phone and texting the word donate with your dollar amount to the, to the number on your screen. So that's the word donate, D-O-N-A-T-E, put a dollar sign and the amount you'd like to give. Ah, we're already getting some gifts. Oh, Nina Yankowitz, thank you very much. Any donation amount is important to us. Remember, we offer most of our programs free of charge, and fundraising is one of the ways we help pay for them. So if you're donating $10, with enough $10 donations, we will be able to run our programs for so many artists who benefit from our work. I see Kate Bellin. Kate, thank you very much for your gift. Thank you, thank you. And there are more coming in. This year, NIFA served over 850,000 people from all disciplines and backgrounds. And we provided almost 5,000 individuals with professional development training and support. And this is during the pandemic we did this. I see Judith Greenberg. Judith, thank you very much. We're very grateful. Thank you so much. If you can give $1,000 or more, we will send you a beautiful Basel Alkazi print as a thank you. If you've already donated $500 to this event, think about adding another $500 to get you to $1,000. Hmm, where will you put your Alkazi print? I know where I'll put mine. This year, NIFA distributed nearly $5 million in funding across well over half the United States. And NIFA helped, <clears throat> excuse me, NIFA helped over 60,000 applicants apply to jobs and other opportunities listed in the NIFA classifieds. Uh, Albert Donini, thank you, Albert. We're very grateful. And for all of you who donate $50 for our 50 year anniversary, you will receive exclusive access to our anniversary talk series, which will begin on May 24th and will feature many NIFA artists live. Our executive director, Michael Royce, will have more details on that later in the program. Oh my goodness, more gifts coming in. Thank you. Mark, thank you very much, board chair. <laughs> Thanks very much to all of you. You know, NIFA really stepped up during the pandemic. Seven new emergency grants were created and NIFA distributed, wait for it, $3,435,000 in emergency grants, which supported 1,200 artists and arts workers with emergency funding. These are the ways that your donations help NIFA help artists. So thank you for your generous gifts. Oh, I see my husband's name. Thank you, Brian, contributing on behalf of the Henry family. Thank you. <laughs> and now here's Mark Jason to introduce our next artist. Hello again, everybody. Let's take a look now at one of NIFA's longest running and most prestigious programs, our Niska NIFA Artist Fellowship, which distributes over half a million dollars a year to nearly 100 New York State artists. Since it began in 1985, this program has helped bring many important artists onto the world stage, including filmmaker Spike Lee, playwright Tony Kushner, painter Faith Ringgold, who were all supported by NIFA before they became legendary artists. We're privileged to bring you the unique work of one of our 2013 fellowship winners. If you've never experienced the magic of this artist, now is your chance. We're pleased to bring you the multimedia stop motion animation of Swoon.
Our next Niska Naifa Fellows are two renowned filmmakers with unique vision and style. Mira Nair and Julie Taymor sit down together to discuss their recent projects, how support from Naifa impacted their early careers, and their thoughts on what lies ahead for the film industry. What I want to say about getting these foundations or these fellowships that young, that early, is that it's probably maybe the first and could be the only time where you completely have, even if it's a small amount of money, to do exactly what you think you should be doing. And that never happens again. This is what I want to say. It doesn't matter if it's $5,000 or $500 million or whatever, 50, 50, 5 million, whatever. There's a certain point where you make a deal, not necessarily with the devil, but you make a deal because there's more money involved and because there's more expectations. So for me, the fact is, I, I don't even know what that means, emergent, you know, of art forms or, you know, it, because you don't think that way. You think, ah, oh, I have a story I want to tell. I'm a performing artist, meaning a perform, I'm not a performance artist, but I'm a director, a designer, a playwright, a playmaker, you know, all those things. So I don't really want to be classified or boxed in or any of that stuff, but somebody is giving me support so that I have freedom and, the, and, and some means, and back then, I remember like even when I did Juan Darien, that was the max we were paid, if that. I mean, the production was 500. But uh, may I just say, may I yeah. just say, Julie, yeah. that what NIFA seemed to have and still has is that acute eye for, for, for the, the, the most extraordinary spark in that land and I was there at Juan Darien. I saw it and I will never forget it. And I will also see, I saw it again because it was a moment of electricity in the theater and its marriage of puppetry and folk and myth and relating from one part of the world to another part of the world on the power of myth, but truth, yeah. I mean, it, you, it was enthralling and oh, unforgettable. Yeah. And no, but really, and, and New York, I mean, so they had amazing taste so and and they still do and that and then i was asking them when did i get mine you know i <laughs> forgot and and they said 1988 and 1988 was the year i finished and showed my first feature film salam bombay which was i mean <laughs> this is going to a mutual was astounding film an yeah. eye opener for all of us really yeah. that was amazing like, and so you know they were looking at us and, and it now when we've lived our lives and we're still living them, but <laughs> when you look back, there was something extraordinarily, unknowingly pure, heightened, stylized, and our voice, I have to say, I, it might sound egotistical, but I don't mean it that way. It, we, we had a voice, we yeah. have a voice, but that voice was crystallized in a very yeah. interesting direction at that moment in those years. I and, think that's, and, that's what we're saying is that yeah. the, the reason it's so important is not the amount of money. It's yeah. that you are given some freedom and yeah. attention and you are said, there's no strings attached. There's no yeah. strings attached. There's no, you have to produce, you have to show us, you have to, no, it's like, do your, do your thing basically. Yeah. And that gives you a feeling of, um, power right it gives you a feeling of okay there's people who believe in me so let's just go yeah. for it and i that's really really rare and i don't even know if that many fellowships and grants exist like that for that yeah. early stage and those days they were even more rare and five thousand dollars or six thousand dollars or whatever we got was sixty thousand dollars probably today yeah. and and as you said the most extraordinary thing about that time and this kind of recognition was that it was a validation yeah. You know, and what you was were doing was striking out on your own in some kind of unknown, unseen way. Mm -hmm. You know, as I was too, because my film, I came from documentary, I came from the street, from cinema verite. I had never studied fiction, I had never done feature, and I was working, and I'd come from the theater as well, and I was working with street, real street kids uh, through a theatrical kind of workshop coming back into their lives visually on the real streets. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of an amalgam in a different way than you were in Juan Darien, but yeah. sort of, as we say in India, milti-julti, similar, but different, you know? Yes, <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> and it, 
yeah. it also then gives because we're not working in a vacuum meaning we're not just creating for ourselves so then you have to say okay this work which is uncharacterized uncategoric uncategorizable is that the word yeah. uncategorizable yeah. because it is a new form it's an emergent form then you have to say to the producers who then will go and bring your work which is critical we're, i'm not an artist who just paints yeah. and then it can it's just the sit there yeah. i need the the further support but that gives confidence to music theater group or to yeah. some small theaters who really this is the thing about what i do which is still a problem even at this date it it's not apparent on a script, you know? It's not apparent what it is until it's made. Mm -hmm. And that, that requires musicians, actors, dancers, people who can perform with puppets, sets, yes. costumes, you know? So that yes. requires then courageous producers like Lynn Austin was at the time yes. and Diane Wondersford who say, oh, well, the New York Foundation for the Arts believes in this artist then, you know, when you get your little playbill, it says, well, what have you done? Well, you got a New York Foundation for the Arts Fellowship, you got an NEA Fellowship, or eventually I got a MacArthur, you know, so those things make people go, I should pay attention. Now that's disgusting, but that is the truth. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> you just watched a small sample of a wonderful 45 minute conversation between filmmakers Mira Nair and Julie Taymor. If you'd like to view the entire discussion, sign up for our 50th anniversary talk series. Anyone donating $50 or more to NIFA will get access to the entire series, including discussions with such artists as Sean Leonardo, Kathleen Chalfont, Dred Scott, and many, many more. Join us in the coming months for our anniversary lecture series. For tickets and additional information, visit us online. All of us at NIFA greatly appreciate the artists that sent their congratulations and well wishes in honor of our 50th anniversary. Thank you for attending and helping us celebrate this milestone anniversary. Many people were involved in bringing tonight's event to life. I would especially like to thank Grace Angela Henry for serving as our elegant host for this evening. Thank you also to the many artists that joined us to share their stories and the NIFA staff and board for making this event possible. And of course, a special thank you to Basil Alkazi for his many years of supporting NIFA and for creating his beautiful limited edition print, especially for our 50th anniversary celebration. Thank you, Basil. Before I sign off, I want to also invite you to attend our 2022 gala when we will honor Kay Walking Stick and Chin Chin Yang. More information to follow. Lastly, a quick reminder that there is still time to stand with us and show your support for artists, both through our online auction or by making a donation. Text the word donate right now with your dollar amount to 646-819-0552. Any amount, whether large or small, means so much and goes directly to support the programs we offer to artists and arts workers. We are so grateful to have you as part of our NIFA community, and we look forward to serving you for the next 50 years. Thank you, and good night.